This video is sponsored by NordVPN. This is the ultimate cargo plane. It has no fuselage and can carry huge oversized cargo like an American pickup truck. It was designed to switch to military operations in a heartbeat and was even able to load nearly 200 passengers, sometimes not even at the gate. And best yet, it was cheaper than any other equivalent plane of its time. But this strange concept was never built and left us scratching our heads why. It's time to meet the Lockheed Flatbed. Cargo planes are the true workhorses and unsung heroes of the skies. They crisscross the globe to ensure the delivery of merchandise and machinery to nearly every conceivable destination, including some of the most remote places on Earth. There are even estimates that worldwide air freight traffic will reach 63.1 million tons in 2021, even with the current crisis. Air cargo is a very competitive niche of an already ultra-competitive aviation industry in which margins can be very tight and schedules tighter still. Unsurprisingly, there have been many innovative designs for cargo planes over the years in an effort to maximize air cargo potential. However, none of them can surely compare in sheer audacity to the Lockheed flatbed plane proposed by the American aircraft manufacturer in the 1980s. This Lockheed concept definitely deserves a closer analysis. The name Lockheed flatbed is the giveaway. This was to be a cargo plane with a flatbed or an open cargo section. Yep, we're talking an open cargo floor, much like a flatbed road transporter or rail carriage, except this one would be airborne. So on this aircraft, there is no actual fuselage as one would normally see on a cargo plane. According to the Lockheed design, the flatbed or open air section would be used to haul cargo containers, outside vehicles or machinery. In fact, most of the cargo would be housed in removable modules, much like huge containers stacked on those cargo ships that ply the world's oceans. Importantly, the flatbed design also allowed for passengers on board who would be sat in a removable module, which would smugly fit on the same flatbed tray. These modules would be uploaded and unloaded as a single unit, whereby they would slide forward off the bed or deck of the open cargo area onto a special purpose truck. The aircraft would be designed to sit low to the ground, allowing the loading trucks to drive up to the aircraft and push the loads onto the cargo deck. Parallel I-beams would be used as the primary load carrying structure for the cargo hold, atop which metal sheeting would ensure a smooth walking surface. You also have to wonder that any cargo not strapped in would instantly blow away as the plane flew. This wouldn't have happened had they used the online security of NordVPN. That's right, today's sponsor is the fastest VPN you can buy to protect your online activity. But wait, there's more. Just like the SR-71, don't let pesky borders stop you from peeking into the content you want to see, like Netflix, games, and cheaper things located in other regions. Don't miss your favorite content even when abroad. Change your virtual location with a click and find deals online at a lower price. It's incredible and it's NordVPN. I personally can't travel without a VPN and that's why I'm proud to say that they've got a Cyber Month deal to get two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount so you can be safe as well. To check it out, go to nordvpn.com slash FAE and use my coupon code FAE. Back to the Lockheed. As with most cargo aircraft, the flatbed would have rollers in the cargo hold that would allow loads on pallets to be rolled on and off with ease. The Lockheed flatbed was also designed to deal with instances of when a plane masses out before it bulks out. This essentially refers to when a plane reaches its maximum takeoff weight, or MTO, before the cargo bay's volume is at capacity. It's a huge headache for the cargo industry and military alike, which is why Lockheed went full steam ahead with this design. Importantly, Lockheed's design would work as both a flying flatbed and a closed cabin 
as needed. Some of the applications proposed included flatbed operations carrying both outsized civil cargo and outsized military cargo, such as tanks, as well as unpressurized intermodal containers from trains, pressurized containers both outside and inside a cocoon, and as mentioned, passengers. These passengers could be loaded conventionally at the airport gate or just the passenger capsule itself could be rolled up on a truck and then loaded onto the plane later. Passengers would have sat in a 3-3 layout with 20 seats in first and 160 in coach, typical of a Boeing 737 today. For airports that lacked ramp facilities, the plane would actually carry its own ramp in a storage bay under the tray to unload huge loads, as well as protection against storms and sand. Nevertheless, there were of course adverse aerodynamics to the Lockheed flatbed design due to it carrying cargo out in the open, since the open section to an aircraft at altitude results in aerodynamic compromise. But Lockheed estimated that this would be a smaller penalty than having a big, bulky cabin when flying a half-empty aircraft. The Lockheed flatbed had significant aerodynamic issue, the location of its engines. Cargo aircraft typically sit low to the ground in order to facilitate loading and unloading. As such, a high wing design is usually used so that the engines have the necessary ground clearance. They are also more aerodynamically efficient. However, Lockheed's open flatbed structure fuselage meant that the flatbed's engines would be positioned directly above the wing and therefore quite low. It's not great for aerodynamic purposes. Nevertheless, the aircraft's engine placement was designed to ensure that the engines avoided foreign object damage or FOD that could easily happen when operating from dirty runways or rough terrain airfields. However, issues such as flight efficiency were not as important for military cargo planes, which must have given Lockheed reason to continue with its strange high engine placement. But it does beg the question, how would that compromise efficiency be met by commercial aircraft companies? To answer that question, we need to look more in depth at the structure of the plane. The US patent for the Lockheed flatbed, as issued to the Lockheed Corporation back in 1981, describes it as a transport aeroplane that features one basic airframe capable of carrying passengers or cargo, including module containers or vehicles. The patent's basic structure includes the cockpit, wings, engines and fuselage as you would expect, but then describes how it would all be connected to the flatbed section at the rear upon which a given payload is stored for flight. The patent also outlines how the loading and unloading of payloads would be facilitated by a removable forward section. This would permit front end access as well as laterally disposed vertical tails that allowed for access at the aft or back of the aircraft. A nifty feature of the patent drawings was a pivoting cockpit, although experts believe that may very well have functioned differently had the plane actually gone into production. But even with all these aerodynamic challenges, Lockheed was certainly convinced of the aircraft's viability. The corporation believed that the flatbed would bridge the gap between two of the biggest headaches for cargo companies, maximum capability of cargo aircraft versus typical daily capabilities and usage. Volume and weight are the two pillars on which the cargo industry does all of its calculations, and Lockheed believed the flatbed could deliver in both counts. It was also convinced that the military customers would be wooed by the amount and diversity of hardware that the flatbed would be able to accommodate. Lockheed's analysis came up with four principal reasons why its flatbed cargo plane design was advantageous for air cargo operations. First, it would allow for significant improvement in quick change operations requiring fast turnaround times. Second, aircraft could be easily converted for military operations. Third, it opened up new potential markets and logistics efficiencies for cargo operators and airlines. And fourth, it would substantially reduce distribution costs for cargo companies. Even so, some experts were not convinced of the aircraft's viability. 
Some experts have pointed out that Lockheed's concept would have probably have required specialized loading facilities and equipment such as loading ramps and loading cranes. This would have escalated the cost of the flatbed cargo plane, making it more expensive to operate compared with the more standard way in which other cargo planes, such as the Hercules, Glowmaster and Galaxy, are able to load and offload their cargo. And then there's the small matter of cargo integrity, which is the industry lingo for making sure that the cargo remains intact whilst in transit. It's not a stretch to imagine cargo exposed to the elements at high altitudes may be in constant danger of becoming detached and flying off. It would seem that very heavy or oddly shaped components and equipment would be more difficult to maintain fastened during flight in open air configurations. With those limitations on cargo variability, what then would be the point of a cargo plane particularly for commercial customers? Oversized cargo in a flatbed cargo hold would almost certainly result in more drag for the plane compared to conventional fuselage. This would surely impact on fuel consumption and even flight times. Once again, there would be an issue of contention for commercial cargo operators. The assessment made by NASA in 1980 regarding Lockheed's flatbed cargo plane design was quite insightful. NASA described the concept as a unique aircraft configuration concept featuring versatility of payloads which are carried on an open cargo floor. NASA did the assessment on the basis of what it called a non-parametric refinement of point design. That's NASA speak for a thorough risk-focused analysis of the design concept and its feasibility, both technically and financially. The assessment including estimations based on weight and performance, as well as the predictions on acquisition and operating costs of the aircraft. NASA conducted its study by benchmarking the Lockheed design against three other aircraft based on three specific parameters, namely those relating to passengers, cargo, and oversized cargo. The agency observes that its early assessments of what it called the unusual aspects of the flatbed concept indicated that there were two areas of concern, namely those relating to specific technical design details and what NASA dubbed general concerns related to the overall viability of the concept. Ouch! Even then, the results of NASA assessment were actually quite positive. The study did find that Lockheed concept with a passenger module would consume 11% more fuel than a conventional passenger airliner and 14% more than an oversized military cargo aircraft. But before you jump to arms, it also found that the flatbed would consume 8% less fuel when carrying pressurized cargo compared to a conventional configured cargo aircraft. Also, the passenger seat mile cost for the Lockheed plane would almost equal to a conventional commercial aircraft today. The NASA study also calculated that a unit production cost of the Lockheed cargo plane would be about a million dollars lower than a conventional cargo plane and nearly two million lower than a passenger airliner. Furthermore, the life cycle cost of the Lockheed flatbed would be 30% lower than a conventional military aircraft. NASA even went as far as recommending that additional studies should be undertaken to further assess the viability of the Lockheed flatbed, including wind tunnel tests and possible use of a metal matrix aft body. It also believes that cost run calculations should be done for both military and commercial cargo airline operations. Surely the quite positive NASA assessment would have encouraged Lockheed to further pursue its flatbed concept, even with all its potential aerodynamic drawbacks. Well, Lockheed didn't seem to think so, and the project was eventually scrapped. No official reason was ever given by Lockheed as to why it ceased development of its flatbed cargo plane. Perhaps there were too many technical challenges, or perhaps it wasn't commercially viable. As with the demise of so many other experimental aircraft, we may never really know why. Oh, and if you've made it this far, I have a mention of course the Soviet Union came up with their own design called the Roma, which is even more bonkers, but I'll cover that in a future video.
And speaking of future videos, if you don't want to miss one, then I suggest you press that big red button and subscribe. Right now, only around 11% of all of my viewers are subscribers. So that means a lot of people are coming back to watch again and again and missing their favorite episodes. And if you want to support the channel more than that, then jump onto Patreon. On our Patreon and our channel members, you get to see videos early, suggest topics and chat directly with me. So jump onto there today and check it out. And thanks so much for joining me today to talk about this pretty wacky but favorite aircraft design.